Hey, what's up, guys? David here from Dignited. Today, I want to walk you through Google Bird, which is a new large language model by Google, which rivals ChatGPT. All right, let's get into it. All right now, the first thing that you want to do is just go to bird.google.com here. The product has been in beta for a very long time, but since last week during Google I/O. It is now out of beta and it's available to anyone across the world. All you have to do is go to bar.google.com and if you're in the 180 countries that are supported, you should be able to access it. All right, so here are some of the things that Google Bard can do. It can answer questions in a comprehensive and informative way. Even if they are open-ended, challenging and strange, it can generate different creative text formats such as poems, code, script, musical pieces, email, and letters. It can translate languages such as English, French, Spanish, German, Chinese, Japanese, and so forth. It can do lots of creative content that I've talked about, poems, code scripts, music, and all that. It can help you do research summarizing information from the web. It can help you proofread your work and edit your work. It can throw at you certain ideas. Maybe you're planning a trip. Maybe you want to uh, come up with a fitness plan. You can always get all that information from Google Bird. So it is sort of like your very smart assistant that can help you get things done. So let's walk through some of the features right here. You will see here a text box here where you enter your prompt. Now, what is a prompt? A prompt is ideally the thing that you want the AI to do for you, be it write a poem or write some code or write an email and so forth. It is all right here. Okay. Yeah, and also you will notice here a microphone. So unlike ChatGPT, Google Bard accepts voice prompts. So you can just say it with your voice and it will automatically get whatever you're trying to get it to do. And then just on the top left panel here, you can reset chat. For example, uh, as you create prompts, it will fill up. And if you just want to clear the screen, just come to reset chat here. Bard activity here stores a history of all your previous prompts i've been using it and all my prompts are right here so if i want to rerun a prompt i can easily just get it there faqs are really to know a little bit more about bud right here and then the updates if you want to know the latest update to the algorithm you can always find it here and then health and support here you can get from the online community about whatever issue that you're facing and of course you also have dark mode here you can always change it to dark mode for example at night when you're working late at night this is a very great feature and then right here you have drafts so the great thing about this chatbot is that it gives you up to three variations of your results so you can choose between three different responses right here when you click to view other drafts then this pencil icon is for editing your prompt so if you want to modify your prompt right here you just use that pencil icon right there and here you can export to google docs or draft in gmail i'll show you lately how it works uh, so you can export your results to those google products and services and here you can just google you can turn your prompt into a google search query right here if you want to copy your response you can also copy it right here so that is just the user interface walkthrough uh, that is how it looks like uh, in my opinion it's really easy to use everything is just right there for you so let's just take it for a spin and see what it can do for us let's see okay so what should we start with let's start with maybe just writing a simple blog post okay so let me say write a blog post let's start with an outline about how to use google bad all right and here you can see that it gives you a very well written outline about a blog post on how to uh, use google bad all right and you can use this outline to create your blog posts right here so one thing i notice is that the output is at once compared to ChatGPT, where it's like typewriter kind of output so here google bad just takes its time but once it has gotten the response it just outputs it all at once okay 
So here we have our uh, introduction, how to get started, how to use and so forth. I think it's really well laid out. And now the difference also here is that you can actually Google this very query, this very prompt here. You can uh, Google it. Okay right here and yeah takes you to the traditional google search here i also notice that you have variations here so if you're not really happy with this first response you can just tap on view other drafts and then just toggle through the different uh drafts or variations of the same query here yeah which chat gpt does not have yeah, so if you're comfortable with whichever, then you can go with whatever response that you want. And to copy, just come to this menu here, these three dots, and then copy right here. This should be able to then paste to whatever text program that you're using. And you can also tell it to generate uh, the response again by clicking on that refresh button. All right, so let's ask it to, for example, write a CV for us. Okay, so I'm just going to ask it to do that. Write for me a CV for a web development, uh, web development portfolio, something. All right, and it gives us a very simple template here where you enter your name, email, LinkedIn profile, GitHub URL, portfolio, the summary here, you have the skills here, uh, experience here, uh, the projects that you've worked on and so forth. So you can actually just feed it with this information and say, my name is David Okui, my email is this, my, uh, my LinkedIn URL is that. And then you tell it, write for me a CV based on this information that I've given you then it will automatically fill in these blank spaces for you so that is quite useful i'm going to ask it to write for us an email for a job offer for example so write an email accepting a job offer as a web developer and there you go. Sure, this is a sample of an email accepting a job offer as a web developer. It says, Dear Hiring Manager. So this is where you put the hiring manager. Writing to express my sincere acceptance of the web developer position at your company. This is where you put the company name. I'm very excited about the opportunity to join your team and contribute to the company's success. As impressed by the company's culture and values, blah, blah, blah. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. Sincerely, you put your name here. Now, you can quickly just export this to gmail and you know just draft that email and just shoot it to the hiring manager uh, assuming this is a real world situation so it automatically opens gmail right here and you just have to fill in uh, the recipient and then also these uh, placeholders right here and you're good to go uh, google bad incorporates or is integrated with some of google's products and services specifically for now I can see Google Docs and Gmail, but this also integrates with other products and services according to the Google presentation, specifically Spotify, which is for music, Walmart for retail, Indeed for job hunting, Adobe Firefly, that is for image generation, Uber Eats, that's for mail delivery, Replit for code, TripAdvisor for travel, and so forth. There are like, I guess, 20 products that this product integrates with outside of the Google services. So yeah, I think it's going to be incredibly powerful over the coming days. I don't see some of these integrations right here, but those integrations are coming very soon this product is able to help you code so if you're a web developer or if you're just learning to code it supports up to 20 programming languages and that includes the popular ones such as python or java or javascript or ruby or c c plus plus or php all the popular ones so i'm just going to give it a spin here i'm just going to ask it to write for me a function that sends email through gmail so write a function in python that sends email through gmail api and there you go all right and this is what we have comments right here explains what it does for us okay and here is the really basic function here okay so i don't know if you can run it to replicate right now or export to collab here i'm not very sure what 
collab is let's just open that and see oh yeah okay must be like a web ide of sorts where you can just actually run code and you know just get the results all right so that's a brief walkthrough some of the features now i want to talk about the limitations of google bad at this point there are quite a few it doesn't give image responses at this point i know the presentation they showed that it actually gives image responses but right now it doesn't and we can you know just try it out and see let's say suggest top 10 places to visit in kampala with images okay there you go it says i'm designed solely to process and generate text so i'm unable to assist with that all right so let's just remove the with images here and run the same prompt okay you can see that yeah without the image addition it actually gives you uh the suggestions right here but it will not give you images in its response so that is one limitation currently but i guess that is being worked on as we speak okay and then the second limitation is that you cannot prompt with images so just like here you can prompt with uh, your voice through the microphone icon here there is really no way of uploading an image and then prompting the other thing i noticed is that it cannot read web urls it simply guesses what the url could be about through reading the url slug so let's just uh, get a url here and see right and let me ask it to summarize contents of this of this url then i give it the url it gives us certain information here but i'm i'm not really quite sure whether it's reading from uh the actual content of the page or it's just simply guessing so if i got it a url which is really quite hard to guess for example by using uh, ids in the in the url let us see if it can you know give us the contents of the url okay no it does not because when you come to this url which is an app that i'm building it's a language translation app for local languages here in uganda it actually does not so this is the content of the url but here google it's giving us completely different content so as far as i know it can't read contents of a url and that is a limitation as we speak right now other limitation is that it doesn't show sources in the uh, prompt responses if you told it for example to suggest the top 10 uh, bluetooth headphones right it won't show you where it was able to get the results from okay so we have the results here the apple airport max yeah of course these are the the top ones i know them but then there are really no web sources to show where it's getting this information from unless of course you google it here and that is where you go to the traditional google search which shows you the blue uh, links so, all right that is my walkthrough of google bad as of 15th may 2023 i'm sure google is going to be improving on this product as the days and the weeks go by and some of the limitations that are mentioned you will not be able to see them anymore yeah so i'll probably be doing a follow-up of this video in the next coming month just to see if google has added some of those features all right so this has been my walkthrough of google bud if you like this video go ahead and give us a thumbs up uh, subscribe to the channel otherwise i'll see you in the next one